Hello students, I welcome you all to my channel Engineers Academy. Do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time. Now we are going to solve these two problems. So the first problem says that two cables tied together at C are loaded as shown. Knowing that the maximum allowable tension in each cable is 800 Newton. Determine the magnitude of the largest force P that can be applied at C and the corresponding value of alpha. So in this particular problem, the tension in this cable and this cable is same. That is equals to 800 Newton. And in the second problem, the tension in cable AC is 1200 Newton, where is the tension in cable BC is 600 Newton. So for that, we have to find the magnitude of the largest force P that can be applied at C and the corresponding value of alpha. So this is the diagram, uh, here we have point C and here we have two cables that are tied together at point C and the force is applied at P at some angle alpha. So we have to find this P magnitude and this angle alpha. So if we cut these rows and so we can represent those tension here in the free body diagram. So in the free body diagram here we will have the tension in rope bc so we can write that this is tbc and here we will have the tension in rope ac so this is tac now as we can see that uh, this uh, cable is making 50 degrees so the tension in uh, row bc is making 50 degree with the horizontal so if it is making 50 degree here and if this is horizontal line so we will have that 50 degree angle here as well so we can say that this angle is 50 degree as well so we will represent this angle so this is 50 degree and similarly uh, here we have this angle 35 so if i draw a horizontal line so we will have that same 35 degree angle here as well so let's represent that angle here as well so this is 35 now as we know that uh, this point C is in equilibrium under the action of these three forces and these, these two tensions and one P force. So as we know that since the number of forces are three and the point C is in equilibrium, these three forces must make a close triangle. And so by head to tail rule. So we need to arrange these three forces in such a way so that they make a close triangle by head to tail rule. So we will have TBC this will be tbc tbc plus tac like this this is tac and then we will have force p from the head of tac to the tail of tbc this is force p now we know that TBC is making um, 50 degree with the horizontal and similarly we know that TAC is making 35 degree with the horizontal and as we know that uh, this angle this angle and this angle both of these angles are alternate angles so we can say that here we have that 50 degree angle as well so now in in problem 257 we are given the magnitude of tac and tbc and both are equal so we can say that tac is equal to 800 newton and tbc is equal to 800 newton so now from this we can say that uh, the length of this uh, arrow and the length of this arrow they are equal since their magnitudes are equal so if the lengths are equal, then the opposite angles are equal as well. So we can say that this angle is angle theta and this angle is angle theta. So now we can find both of these angles. Uh, since we know that the sum of the angles of a triangle is always equal to 180 degrees, so we can say that theta plus theta plus the sum of both of these is 50 plus 35 is 85 so plus 85 this must be equals to 180 degrees and theta plus theta is 2 theta equals to 180 minus 85 and dividing both sides by 2 we will get theta equals to 180 
minus 85 divided by 2 so this gives us 47.5 so theta equals to 47.5 degrees if I draw a horizontal line here so that force P is making angle alpha here so this is that angle alpha and as we know that uh, this angle is 35 then this angle is 35 as well so let's let's represent that angle as well so now we can find angle alpha from this we can see that this is theta we know the value of theta and this is 35 degrees so alpha will be equal to theta plus 35 so alpha is equal to theta plus 35 degrees and now theta is 47.5 plus 35 degrees so this answer which is 47.5 plus 35 is 82.5 so alpha is equal to 82.5 degrees for that maximum allowable tension of 800 newton in each of the cable and now we can find p magnitude after finding the, those angles theta by using the law of sines so we can say that p divided by sine of the opposite angle which is 85 this is force p and the opposite angle is this and this must be equals to uh, tac or we can say tbc divided by the sine of the opposite angle so the opposite angle is theta so we can say that tbc is 800 divided by sine of 47.5 degree so now from this we can say that p equals to multiplying both sides of equation by sine of 85 so this will give us the value of p which is required so 800 sine of 85 divided by sine of 47.5 this gives me the p value approximately equal to 1081 newton So when the tension in both the cable is equal to 800 Newton, the, the maximum force that can be applied at point C is 1081 Newton and it must be acting at an angle of 82.5 degrees in order to keep that point C is in equilibrium. Now in the solution of, uh, for the solution of part B, the magnitudes of TAC and TBC that, that is different. So let me erase all these. So now this will be our uh, diagram. And now the value of TAC is um, the tension in AC is 1200 Newton. And TBC is 600 Newton. And we are required to find this P. And we are required to find the magnitude of angle alpha. So now we know we, we we do not know these angles since they are not equal let's say that this angle is um, theta and let's say this angle is beta so we only know this angle which is 85 and we know the magnitudes of tbc and tac so we can find the value of p uh, by applying the law of cosines so by applying law of cosines, we can say that P square is equal to TAC square plus TBC square minus uh, 2 into TAC into TBC and cos of the included angle between TAC and TBC. So the included angle is 85 degrees. And if we take the square root on both sides, so we will get them the magnitude of P. So this will be so now we can put those values so tac is 1200 square plus tbc is 600 minus 2 into 1200 into 600 cos of 85 degrees you guys can find the solution of 257 by applying the law of cosines as well so you you people must try that as well so this will give us p value p value is 1200 square plus 600 square minus 2 into 1200 into 600 cos of 85 
So this gives a speed value approximately equal to 1294 Newton. And similarly, we, we are required to find the angle alpha. So now we know the magnitude of P, we know the magnitudes of the sides of all, uh, all the three sides of a triangle. So we can apply sine's law. Now we can say that uh, if you want to find to find angle alpha, we need to find this angle theta. So we can say that sine of theta, we can apply law of sine. So sine of theta divided by the magnitude of TBC, which is 600 will be equal to sine of uh, this angle divided by the magnitude of P. So sine of uh, 85 divided by P magnitude, which is 1290. So now we can say that sine of theta is equal to 600 sine of 85 divided by 1294. So 600 sine of 85 divided by 1294. So this gives me a 0 0.4619 and we can take if we take sine inverse of that value that will give us theta. So shift sine inverse of that answer so which is theta it comes out to be 27.51 degrees and now we want to find angle alpha so we know that angle alpha will be equal to angle alpha will be equal to this theta plus that 35 degrees so alpha is 27.51 degrees plus 35 degrees so this answer plus 35 this gives us 62.5 so the solution for the second problem is when TAC is 1200 Newton and TBC is uh, 600 Newton, the magnitude of that largest force P is 1294 Newton and it must be acting at an angle of 62.5 degrees with the horizontal. So this is the solution of these two problems. I hope this will help you in your learning. Let me know in the comments if this helps in your learning. Do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Vector Mechanics for Engineers by Bear and Johnston.